Thank you very much. And thanks for coming out. It's great to be in, back in Portland. I love this town. So being in this town and being here at Powell's is a, uh, a thrill I never thought I would have. So thank you all for letting me have this opportunity. I want to talk more than read, and I think I'll begin by just uh, answering a question that I'm often asked when I am speaking to groups, and that is, why did you do what you did? Why don't more people do what you did? And what led you to do what you decided to do? And uh, it's, it's, there was no one thing that uh, led me to do this. It was a culmination of a, of a number of things. And part of it was just where I, where I come from, uh, which I will read a little bit about that in just a few minutes. I had a wonderful career in the health insurance industry. I've actually had two careers. I was a journalist, uh, and I had a very good career as a journalist. I was a reporter initially in Memphis and Nashville, and then finally in Washington, and I covered Congress and, and the, the White House and the Supreme Court for a few years. But I decided to uh, go into PR. Uh, first in, uh, in, in a political campaign. I was a press secretary for a guy who ran for governor of Tennessee. And from there, my, my PR career just meandered, and it took me from one place to another, and I eventually wound up working for a big for-profit health insurance company, Humana, uh, based in Louisville, Kentucky. At that time, Humana was largely known as a hospital company, and I was hired to help promote and defend uh, and be a spokesperson for the hospitals that the company owned. After doing that for four years, I was recruited to uh, uh, Louisville, uh, to uh, Hartford, Connecticut, to support Cigna's healthcare operations. Cigna, at that time, was a very large multi-line insurance company. It had property and casualty, a property and casualty division, a financial services division, and a reinsurance division, uh, and I was hired to help raise the awareness of Cigna as a health insurance company. Uh, insurers were beginning to catch on to the fact that a lot of money could be made in health insurance. Uh, when I worked at Humana, Humana decided to get rid of its hospitals because the executives and shareholders thought that they could make more money if they focused on managed care and health insurance. So they spun the hospitals off to a different company and, and focused on, uh, on managed care. And I became the chief spokesperson for Humana and was doing that when I was recruited to Cigna. Uh, and Cigna likewise uh, saw that there was a lot of money to be made in health insurance and got rid of its property and casualty division and the other divisions that shareholders felt were not as profitable as health insurance uh, could be. So did Aetna did the same thing. Aetna's uh, uh, mix of businesses was very similar to Cygnus during that time, and Aetna did exactly the same thing. It got rid of those other divisions so it could focus on making money on health insurance. When I joined those companies, I thought that managed care was truly uh, a good way to provide uh, you know, finance health care in this country, and I still think that as a concept, it's not bad. We have some still very good, I think, solid and reputable players in the managed care space. Uh, and, you know, some, uh, some people might disagree, but I think the Kaiser model is one that has, has worked pretty well for a lot of people, and here in the North, Pacific Northwest, and, and some other parts of the, of the country, like the, uh, the Northeastern states, uh, where primarily there have been nonprofit organizations that have provided uh, health insurance. Uh, what really happened uh, was back uh, about the time that I was working for Humana, both Humana and Cigna, by the way, are for-profit companies, as you probably know. They're two of, uh, of seven very large for-profit companies that now dominate the health insurance industry, and I've worked for two of them. Uh, now, one out of every three Americans is enrolled, if you're insured, in some kind of a benefit plan uh, sponsored by or offered by one of these seven big companies. Uh, the uh, for-profit companies began to dominate uh, in the years following the collapse or the failure of the Clinton health care plan. And we saw the conversion of a lot of for nonprofit Blue Cross plans to for profit status. And we saw a consolidation in the industry. And now we have uh, a lot of the Blue Cross plans around the country are owned by this big, gigantic company called WellPoint. Uh, so we've seen enormous change in the industry. My, my point is that. Uh, Initially, the concept of managed care was, was, again, something that worked pretty well for a lot of folks. But when these companies saw that they could make a lot of money on managed care, that's when things started getting, uh, I think, really, uh, our healthcare system took a turn for the, significantly for the worse. 
uh, one of the things that led me to finally decide that I was not in the right business. I was growing increasingly uncomfortable being a spokesman for an industry that was pushing more and more of us into uh, so-called consumer-driven plans. You may have heard the term, uh, but they, it's a kind of a euphemism for plans that have very high deductibles. And what they are doing is pushing more and more of us into these kinds of plans that require us to pay a lot more money out of our own pockets for care, even if we have insurance. We're paying premiums every month, uh, often as much as we have in the past, but we're getting far less value for it. Uh, often they, they shrink the benefits or they eliminate benefits, and they make us pay a lot more out of our own pockets. WellPoint has a plan in Maine that is requiring people to pay $30,000 out of their pockets before the insurance will pay a dime. Uh, that is the trend, and I, I was growing increasingly uncomfortable being a spokesman for, for these kinds of plans. Uh, they're extremely profitable for health insurance companies. Uh, and that is one reason why in 2010 these companies have recorded record profits. When I was working for Cigna for 10 years, I handled financial communications. I was the person who explained to reporters who called every time the company announced earnings uh, how the company made its money and whether or not it met, met Wall Street's expectations. That is the most important thing to these companies, is whether or not you're going to meet, meet Wall Street's expectations for profit. And if you don't, uh, your, your stock price will go down. And when that happens, if you're an executive, so will your stock options. And you do not want that to happen. So the first priority is always to meet Wall Street's expectations. You have, you're financially invested in this. And the CEOs, uh, for example, at Cigna, the CEO, 90% of his salary is at what they call at risk, uh, and it's, it's determined on whether or not uh, the company performs to Wall Street's satisfaction. And if he doesn't, he doesn't get as much. But if he does, he makes an enormous amount of money, millions and millions of dollars every year. Uh, I, again, I, I, I was worried about these plans, and I did not believe, as I was having to say, that these, this was the new silver bullet to get more people covered and to provide uh, adequate coverage. Uh, what I really was learning was that it is a, a primary reason why we now have not only 51 million people who are uninsured, we have at least half that many, if not more, 25 million as estimated by the Commonwealth Fund in 2008 who are underinsured. You've been listening to the first eight minutes of a program featuring former Vice President of Corporate Communications for Cigna, Wendell Potter, talking about his latest book, Deadly Spin, an insurance company insider speaks out on how corporate PR is killing health care and deceiving Americans. This program is available in full at the Vimeo Home for Videos website at vimeo.com. Just search for the PDX Justice channel or search on the keywords PDX Justice and Potter. You can also link to this program via the PDX Justice Media Productions website at pdxjustice.org. PDX Justice media production channels can be found on the YouTube and Vimeo video hosting sites at youtube.com and vimeo.com. You can also watch these programs via the Netflix on-demand video service, which now includes the Vimeo Home for Videos as one of the channels you can add to your on-demand video streaming environment. Many of our programs are available on DVD or Blu-ray video discs. Please write to us at pdxjustice at riseup.net for ordering information. Thanks for tuning in, and thanks for supporting listener-sponsored radio, public access cable television, net neutrality, independent bookstores, and all forms of grassroots, democratic community media.